Welcome, 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 welcome to my studio. My name is Lisa V and I'm here in Sandpoint, Idaho and today we are making a tabletop painting pour. And why? Because they are amazing and beautiful. And why do they work? They work because they're amazing and beautiful. And you like to create. Creating is fun. Don't forget to press that like button to tell me how much you like it so I can create more things like that that you want to create. Lazy Susan. But first we are going to start off with a one board that's ready to go and the first thing we want to do always is to level it so we'll double check it to make sure it's always level because the paint is going to spill over on top of it you want it to pour nice and evenly so we'll go ahead and grab that it's nice and level when I start my painting pours I try to make sure my surface is pretty clean and I want to start at the top and work my way down so that we go from dark to medium to light to the sort of a beachy area. So I usually start off with pouring it. Now I've painted all my edges a black and the bottom black and I'll put a few streaks. I'm not getting super specific because I really don't know how exactly it's going to turn out. They turn out different every single time you do them. But I do want to make sure that I get a nice surface of paint on there because the paint, when you're doing painting pours, you need to have the pour will stick more um, to the surface, but it will flow more if it has a background, if it has some sort of paint to flow with. So I'm going to add some, a little bit of that darkness to the background to get it looking really spectacular. I could roll it over the edges and I'll give it just a little bit of a roll just to make sure it gets over there. It looks kind of nice. Okay, and then what I'm going to do now that I have a little bit, now I'm not getting super specific, nothing fancy here. I'm going to add a few other colors. Now that's a darker blue. It's a, actually a thale blue with a little bit of black in it. And then I like to mix my colors and put them in glass jars. Jars, glass jars don't have too much oxygen in them. So it makes them not as lumpy. The paint doesn't get as lumpy and I'll put a few loose, maybe just one. And I'll see how that looks. I'll add it to my surface. Now it's not going to look exactly like that. A lot of times people will take a painting pour and dump it on there into a flip cup and it looks really beautiful, but I'm trying to make something that's a little bit more specific. So a, a water type scene and water actually flows in a direction. So whenever I'm painting, I'm always painting something, something in the direction of the subject. It helps it look like the subject, helps it start off looking like the subject. Now it's already starting to look cool because I added Floetrol to it. Floetrol is a painting medium that helps things kind of flow better and they just look really nice. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of the lighter blue, just a tiny, tiny bit. This is almost like a teal sort of a green blue and then I'm going to go back to that dark blue as if the ocean is coming down and it's a deep dive right down into here again once again trying to make sure I get enough paint on there so you're probably going to put as much dark blue as anything else but it's different everybody likes something different so I'm going to go ahead and get those edges and make sure I get a nice surface because the paint flows so much better if at any time you're painting something you're like, oh dude, I super don't like it, you could start pushing it off and letting it go. You could pick up your surface and let it go. And I'm just rolling it around, getting a nice roll flowing. Maybe even put a few up in here so that they roll around. It looks like it's just a nice soft surface. Then I'm gonna continue to bring it down in here. Now I know that I wanna put a little tiny smidge of a sandy area so I'm gonna put a little bit of the blue the excuse me yellow to create a nice sandy area I'm gonna also take my trusty spoon and spread it around nicely the blue and the yellow if they touch will mix into a nice green however I'm not super looking forward to too much green in there even though I am gonna add a touch of it to the water 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, now that I have a nice surface to work on, that's a really nice surface, and that was two minutes of just pouring dark, medium, light, and a little bit of yellow. Now I'm gonna take the white and I'm gonna pour it right across where the sand and the water meet, just a nice little hint of it. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this copper and gold. I like the copper and gold, it just looks kind of cool. And add a little tiny bit of it, rolling it all down those edges, adding a little bit more of that yellow because it's all gonna create on top of it and blend together. Now, this already looks good to me because I like color, but I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of green. Green doesn't seem like it should be in there, but believe it or not, that when you add a little tiny bit of it, it sometimes blends in with it nicely. You'll notice I'm trying to go with the other colors. If at any one time something gets away from you, you can once again scrape it to the side and see what happens and just continue on. You want, I, you'll notice I'm working on a cardboard and the reason I'm working on a cardboard is so that it can catch all my drips, making it super easy. I have the whole back side edge of this particular piece. Hi, I'm so glad to see you everybody. Argentina, Australia. Um, Texas, Florida, yes, 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 ready to go, ready, ready, ready. Okay, yes, thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome sauce. Okay, so here we have, we put a little bit of the streak of the gold and copper, and now I'm gonna take that white and I'm gonna blend it really softly, not too much, because I'm just trying to get it to softly blend but not too much. Yes, Jenny, this is acrylic paint. I'm using acrylic paint. Dick Blick acrylic paint seems to be the best. It's really fresh. I like fresh paint. You can always tell the difference. Now I'm mixing in the greens. Right, um, Andy from Maryland, how are you? Yes, we do mix. It's a 50-50 mix of Floetrol and acrylic paint. Uh-huh, exactly. That's right, Susie from Maryland also, you guys, um, it is 50-50 um, mix and then I thin it with water. I thin it so that the paint can flow. You want it to get nice and flowing. See, we have a nice, beautiful flow as if it were a wave coming up on the beach. Now I'll have to go through and check all my edges to make sure that they are completely covered with paint. They have to be covered with paint in order for it to dry nicely. You want the edges to look absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so now I really do have something pretty there that's awful pretty. This particular blue, this teal light blue, it really can get carried away. That's why I only have one chunk of it. So I'm gonna do what we talked about earlier. I'm gonna push, continue to push it, let the other colors take it over and outweigh it. You can always outweigh a color with other colors by just continually pushing it and I'm pushing it so that the scene continues to flow just like it would in an ocean. That looks really nice. I'm gonna leave that stuff on the back of the spoon and roll it up over here. I'm not trying to make a scattered look. I'm not trying to make it anything special. I'm trying to stick with what nature already has created, something wonderful and beautiful, a nice ocean scene. Wow, that looks really, really great. Now what I'm gonna do, because life is so wonderful, I am going to add a couple of streaks of pure white. Now, on these particular ones, I did not add any oil to the paint. When you add oil to water-based paint, they separate. So I'm gonna add three drops of the silicone to the white, just for fun, because it will actually cause more lacing. I was supposed to add three drops, I added a lot more because it comes out. You probably have this silicone oil in your mother's sewing machine or something out in the garage. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix it in with there just a little tiny bit. I'm gonna run a couple of streaks all across here, just a couple of them. Still trying to stay in the realm of what I've already created. Staying with those waves, 
I'm not trying to recreate anything. I'm trying to stick with what nature has, which is nice waves. And I'm going to run one up here on the beach area. Now that's a lot of white, but that's all right. Because remember, we can always take our really special tool and continue to wipe it if it gets too much. Now look, I got a little chunk of something in there. I'm just going to push it over. Sometimes the flow trawl causes the paint to chunk up and that's why I keep it in glass jars. It helps that. I'm going to continue to push that white. Mine was a little bit thick. Maybe put an extra one right there. Now I have a wet towel here and I'm continually wiping off my tool so that I start off fresh and continue to move it. I'm moving the colors because of the flow trawl into one another. Look at that coolness. Yep, and then I'm going to continue to wipe it every single time between so that the paint doesn't mix too much. I want it to mix a little but not too much. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the shoreline and clean that up. Now it's getting kind of thick in there, but that's all right. We can always continue to push it over the edges. We want to make sure all our edges get nice and hit. Now look at this, it's a big thing of white. So I'm going to move it around a little bit. And then comes the super tricky part where I am going to actually take a straw and blow on it. When you blow on it, it helps separate and splatter the paint out. So let's just see. Now you could continue to blow on it. Some people actually use a um, blow dryer to blow on it, but that gets, for me is a little bit too much force. I don't want it to splatter across the whole thing. I want to keep it a little bit more defined. Now, this is how this one started off, but it will continue to transition and change and move while it's at this stage. Now you see how easy that was to create. In literally just a couple of minutes, we created a beautiful scene, but it's gonna to continue to spread out and the design will continue to take on its own. You'll just continue to babysit it so that if one color gets too separated or too far out, you'll use your handy dandy straw and you'll blow it back into shape, making it super easy, lots of fun. And yes, we just created a nice little table and had some fun.